here with my life as geek guys. On this channel, I create videos on product reviews, makeup tutorials, and lifestyle advice with the aim to entertain, educate, and enrich the lives of others. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you join the Geek Guy family. Today's video is going to be a makeup tutorial of this look that I have going on right here. As you can see, it's not just your usual everyday glam makeup look, or at least I hope it doesn't look like one of those because today's makeup tutorial is going to be a ballroom dancing makeup tutorial. And it's not just me going through and how I created this eye look right here. It's little tips and tricks that I have learned throughout the years of ballroom dancing competitions that helped my makeup last throughout the whole day. And believe you me, there were some really super long days that we went through back in the day when I used to compete. So this video has actually been quite requested by several friends of mine throughout the years where they have said, please teach me how to do makeup, please tell me what your tips and tricks are. And so finally, finally, I have made this video. Even though I myself am not training anymore to go through ballroom dance Latin American competitions, but my makeup skills are still on point, so I'm going to be sharing with you today tips and tricks on how I do this ballroom makeup and how to make it last all day. I wanted to get this video out in time for all of my friends who are competing in the Australian Championships this year. When this video comes out, I think it'll be the weekend of. So I wanted to make this video in time for that for those of my friends who need a little bit of help in their makeup looks and maybe want a makeup tutorial to help boost their confidence a little bit in being able to do their makeup looks for this very exciting, important weekend. I know it's a very stressful day when you have to get up early, when you have to do your makeup yourself, so sometimes it helps to have someone who can tell you little tips and tricks from their own experience of how to make their makeup look good and step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this ballroom makeup look going on right here. I know there are so many different makeup looks that you could do for ballroom dance competitions. The possibilities are endless. This is the look that I tended to gravitate more towards when I was competing in ballroom dancing. So it's kind of like the look that I have gotten down pat throughout the years. Now, as you can tell, this is not a hair tutorial. If it was, you would probably be just frustrated because I absolutely suck at doing my hair. For hair for me, for ballroom dance competitions was so much more stressful than makeup. So I'm sure that you could just Google ballroom hair competition tutorial because it ain't this. It ain't this. <laughs> Now it's also very important to note that when wanting to create not just ballroom looks but any makeup look, it is quite important to have good quality tools and brushes to create the look. It is possible to create this makeup look without specific brushes, but let me tell you right now, it really truly does help in the application. I use specifically five makeup brushes, I think it's five makeup brushes for this look, and I will leave those brushes that I use in the description box down below. Those are my holy grail, those are the ones that I cannot create any look without. Also, before I go any further, it's also very important to note that everyone has different eye shapes. This particular technique or look might not work for your eye shape, but don't be discouraged because any makeup look, there is a version of doing it for your eye shape. So while I can do my absolute best in giving you this makeup tutorial and hopefully it's a very understandable one and followable one, <laughs> it's also important to practice on your eye shape. Don't get frustrated, just keep practicing, just keep practicing and before you know it, you'll get really, really good. Good. I'm gonna leave an insert of a photo right here of the very very first attempt of ballroom makeup that I ever did and believe you me it was very bad it was pretty bad and here we are today so yeah if you guys want to see how I created this makeup look right here then just keep on watching Okay, first off, I'm gonna start with a good base for my eyeshadow. Now with ballroom dancing competition, you're going to want a good primer that is going to make your eyeshadow last all day. And the foundation of that is really, really important. I personally would just use concealer because it is a thicker, heavier sort of base for the eyeshadows to cling onto and hold for all those intense hours that you're going to be wearing this makeup. But if you have a specific eyeshadow primer that you know works for your skin type, then you go for it. But it is also really important to use an eyeshadow primer that has a bit of a tint in the base so as to provide a clean slate for the eyeshadow that you're going to be layering on top of it. For myself, typically, I liked to go into a lighter shade of concealer as my base simply because I want any of the colors that I put on top of that to stand out a whole lot more and applying a lighter base helps achieve that. So I'm going to go in with the Maybelline Master Concealer and use that as my eyeshadow base. 
I always, always, always go in with my eyeshadow first before I do the rest of my face because ballroom dancing makeup typically uses a lot of black eyeshadow just to intensify the look and using black eyeshadow will inevitably give you a fair bit of fallout on the rest of your face so it's very important to do your eyeshadow looks first. I'm going to set all of that in with a clear translucent setting powder so as to provide a nice smooth slate for all the eyeshadows that you're going to be layering on next. For this look, you can use any eyeshadow palette that you have as long as it does have neutral browns, some darker browns, and most importantly, a black eyeshadow. And so for this look, I have been going into the Morphe 35K eyeshadow palette. This is one that I use so much. You can do so many different looks with these. So first off, I'm going to go into this shade here. This one is a really nice transition shade, and that is just the base of all the eyeshadows that we're going to be blending into our crease. I find that building up eyeshadows is really really important rather than slapping on straight away a deepening up shade. The building up eyeshadows really gives you that blendability and the foundation of the eyeshadows to actually stay all day. So I'm just going to take that shade and apply that into my crease. I'm basically taking that shade all the way from the outer corner into the inner corner. So basically what I'm going to do in this transition area here, I'm going to take this shade, then go a little bit darker, then go a little bit darker, then go a little bit darker and so on and so forth and sort of build up the shades little by little not going in really heavy with the shades just taking your time and building it up and as you go darker in the shades take that shadow a little bit lower into the transition not blending it out so much so basically you are creating that gradient effect from blown out down into your crease I hope that makes sense so next I'm going to take this shade and taking this shade but I'm not going to take that one up as high. I'm going to go a little bit lower. And now switching from the fluffy blending brush to one with a little bit more of a tapered tip, I'm going to go into the next dark shade, this one here, and then I'm going to take that tightly into my crease and not blow it out as much. This step of providing yourself with a seamless transition shade can be a little bit tedious, but I'm promising you that the time that you spend blending and building up those colors will really pay off. And then going even smaller on a finer tip blending brush, I'm now going to go into the deepest shade of brown, and that is this one here. And this shade, I'm just going to focus right on the outer corner of my eye here, just to deepen up the look. And then as I'm applying that, I'm going to sort of flick it out this way to create that cat eye look. Blending and buffing, and then very, very gently buffing it out this way as well. Depending on your eye shape, this technique may or may not work for you, but as you're blending out your eyeshadow, sort of envision where that line looks good on you coming out and then blend up to there. Now, if you feel like the shadow is falling out down here, that's okay. You can always go in later on and clean it up. So don't be afraid to blend out that depth out this way as well. So what I'm doing is applying most of the shadow here on the outer corner of my eye and as the product leaves the brush and blends out, I'm bringing it out gently and blending it up above here to apply more depth and dramaticness to the eye look. Now keep in mind black eyeshadow can be a little bit scary so you're going to want to go in very carefully and very gently with this black eyeshadow. Remember to build it up. Don't just slap it on and then try and blend it out because that's not going to work. <laughs> what really helps for the black eyeshadow to stick and not fluff everywhere is to provide a base for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with a black eyeshadow. This one is a Rimmel Creamy Black Waterproof Eyeliner. I'm just going to take it on the outer part of my eye here. Here, sort of like an inverted C create a little bit of a wing it doesn't have to be a sharp wing bring it out a little bit blend it into your eyelashes as well and that's basically what you're gonna want it to look like you're now going to want to go in with a very small fine tipped brush this one is the Morphe E36 and now you're going to go into your black eyeshadow like I said before take a little bit at a time so what you're going to do with that black eyeshadow is use it on that creamy base that you've just set. Having a base combined with a black eyeshadow will make it stay a whole lot longer and look a whole lot more intense. Now we're going to take that black eyeshadow and blend it out to create that cat eye look. Taking that blending brush into a tiny little bit of black eyeshadow 
and swoop it out to create the cat eye look. And as that product is blending out of the brush, gently take it up above here as well and start to extend your shadow up above your transition to give your eye that intense signature ballroom look. Be sure to never bring your black shadow on the inside of your eye unless you want that sort of look. But for this look today, try not to bring your black eyeshadow on the inside of your eye and have it stop here because the inner part of the eye is where we're going to apply all the glitter and the shimmer and the statement of the look. Okay, now I know this looks intensely crazy, but this is why we do our eyeshadow first before our foundation base. Now I'm going to go in with a little bit of makeup remover and clean up under the eyes. Now this is one of the most important steps in this look. It's always important to clean up the black fallout that you have under your eyes so as to provide a very nice clean base for the rest of your face. Now when you're cleaning up under the eyeshadow here, take your little makeup remover, have like a little sharp little point here, so that when you clean up under the eyes, you can create that sharp cat eye look. Try and think of where you want the angle to be. The angle of your sharp point kind of wants to be in a V formation with where the tip of your eyebrow is going to be. Does that make sense? I hope it does. <laughs> And you're going to want to try and get it as even as possible on both sides. That doesn't always work for me. <laughs> now for the inner corners of my eyes, I'm going to go in with a small fine tip packing brush. And just with a little bit of concealer, I'm going to carve out the inner corners of my eyes with that. Sort of create a cut crease and a blank space for all the inner shimmers that we're going to apply. I'm going to take that cut crease up above my actual crease as well. Just to create a bit more of a dramatic look. So when you're doing this part of the look, cutting your crease with concealer, don't be afraid to take it out a little bit this way as well because you can always deepen up the parts that you cover with the concealer. You can always deepen that up again with some eyeshadow. Cleaning off my packing brush, I'm going to now go into that white eyeshadow. This one is a really nice, bright, shimmery white eyeshadow and I'm going to apply that everywhere that I applied the concealer. Now this is the part in the look where you could change up to suit the color of your costume or your color accent in your dress. But for now, I'm just going to go in with white and uh, maybe apply some glitter. Now if at this point you're looking at my eyeshadow look and you're like, well you have a lot of lid space, that, that look will work for your eyes and not for my eye shape. Well if you really think about it, I actually don't have that much lid space. My lid space stops here, but nothing is stopping me from creating more lid space for myself and bringing that white shimmer up above my actual crease. I'm just utilizing the God-given space that I have. It's not necessarily eyelid space, but it's space. <laughs> and basically creating the illusion of bigger eyelids than I actually do have. Now I'm going to go into this deep brown shade here and use that as a gradient color to blend the black and the white in together. Now in this part of the look, you could dress it up however you want. You could create color where that cut crease is, apply a bit of a glitter there. You could apply some pigment on the inner corners of your eyes. I personally at this point would have gone in with a really bright blue shimmer or glitter right on the center of my eye here because my Latin costume dress was a cute little blue number. <laughs> What I'm going to do for today's look is go in with some glitter because you absolutely cannot go wrong with glitter. The glitter that I'm going to be using today is the Stila Magnificent Metals Glitter Shadows and this one is in the shade Diamond Dust. Now these Stila shadows I have raved about so much. These ones stay all day. They do not flake or fall off. So if you want a glitter that is going to stay on your eyelids for the long competition day. Those are some long ass days, man. Waiting, a lot of waiting around, standing in line, trying to stay warm and waiting for your turn to get on the floor. So you want these eyeshadows and these pigments to stay all day. I have found that the Stila Magnificent Metals glitters are the way to go if you want glitters that will stay all day. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in with some of this and apply that on the whole inner eyelid. Now 
Now, before we finish off the eyes, we're gonna wanna go in with the rest of our face. So if in the process of applying that pigment on your eyelids, you did have a bit of fallout, you're gonna want to clean up any of that fallout again so as not to layer any fallout or glitter underneath your foundation. Now let's talk about primer for a second. If you want your foundation to last all day, honey, it is so important to apply a good base for your foundation, and that means primer. So if you have to layer on the primers, then you do that, even if it means like a face oil and a lotion. If you have an oily skin type, then apply a mattifying primer. If you have a really dry skin type, then apply a hydrating primer. Use one that really works for your skin type because that is the secret of how to make your foundation last all day long. I personally have a combination skin, so I'm going to go in with both a smoothing primer and a hydrating primer. But before I do any of that, I'm going to go in with my Jericho Cosmetics Serum. This one is simply a base to give a bit of nourishment for my skin for the rest of the day because it's gonna be intense, there's gonna be lights, you're gonna be wearing your makeup for the whole day, so you're gonna to want to apply a little bit of skincare. You're just gonna to want to give your skin a bit of love and a bit of care for the rest of the day because your skin's gonna be the last thing you wanna think about when you are going through your competition day. So first, I've applied my serum, then I'm going to go in with the Vitamin C C Ferment Day Serum. This one helps brighten and revitalize your skin. Now I'm going to go in with a bit of moisturizer. And now I'm going to go in with both the Smoothing Primer and the Hydrating Primer. These ones are from Mecca Cosmetica. I know these might seem like a whole lot of extra steps, but... Honey. Ballroom dancing is the absolute epitome of extra. Always be sure to take your skincare and primers down your neck as well. Okay, now finally we can go in with our foundation. I always use the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Matte Foundation and believe you me, this is 24 hour wear. I once put this on at 3 a.m. in the morning because we freaking live in the middle of central Victoria. Like not just central Victoria, the middle of central Victoria. All the ballroom dancing competitions here in Victoria were in the big city, which is fair enough. And so for the section that I was competing in, to get there in time, I had to get up at 3.30 in the morning to get ready to do my hair and makeup. So applying this at 3.30 in the morning, oftentimes because my husband was also competing in the same competition and his sections were on later in the day, we wouldn't get home until one or two in the morning. So a nearly 24 hour wear of this foundation, sure it might have faded and cracked a little bit, but because of all the preparation that I did on the rest of my face, and the foundation itself, this stuff stayed. So this is my OG, this is my go-to, and this is just what I wear all the time. Instead of slapping on a whole heap of foundation all at once, build it up. It's kind of like painting a wall. You want to do one layer at a time and let it dry in between layers because if you slap it on all at once, like all three layers all at once, it's gonna look cakey, it's gonna look bad, basically. So layer on a few layers at a time, blend that in and go in with your next layer. That is the trick and the key to making your foundation look smooth and flawless and last all day long. Sometimes you don't have to even put a whole lot of layers of foundation on. If you're using a full coverage foundation, sometimes you only really have to blend in one layer and the full coverage-ness of the foundation will do the trick. So if you did want a little bit of extra coverage from the foundation that you're using, just apply a little bit in the certain spots that you want the extra coverage and then use concealer for the other spots. Now for concealer, I'm going to go in with my Maybelline Age Rewind and for this one, I'm going to use a fair bit and use that to highlight under the eyes. Sorry if you can hear my washing machine, it's really really loud but I kind of need to do my washing so... I'm just using this concealer to conceal and highlight the areas that I need highlighting. Now before I apply any powders to my face, I'm gonna go in with a bit of cream highlight and this one is the ColourPop Super Shock Cheek Highlight in the shade Spring and apply that on the high points of my face. I 
Okay, now I'm going to set down that concealer with some powder. I'm just using a loose translucent setting powder. And in order to prevent creasing for the rest of the day, it's really important to press in that powder. And especially if you have an oily skin type, make sure that you really work in that powder into your oily areas. Okay, before we go in with the rest of the face, let's finish off the eyes. I'm going to go in with that same black eyeliner that I used to define the outer corners of my eyes. I'm going to go in with that same black eyeliner and apply that in my waterline. I'm not going to take that all the way into the inner corner because with my type of eyes, I know that my eyes are going to water on the inner corners and start to bleed out underneath. So I'm not going to take that all the way into the inner corner tear duct. I'm just going to maybe like stop right here. Again, with that fine tip brush, I'm going to go into that black eyeshadow and very, very tightly blend out that black under the lower lash line and try and not blow it out too much underneath that lower lash line. I'm also not going to take that black eyeshadow all the way into the inner corner of the eye. I'm just going to stop right in the center here. Okay, now this part is optional, but if you wanted to create that little corner cat flick on the inner corner of your eye as well, you can do that. This also depends on the skill level and confidence of, of yourself. But if you think then you can do it, then you can try it. This part of the look is definitely something that comes with practice. So if you feel like that you've had enough practice to do this, then go ahead. But if you feel really nervous on the day of the competition and you don't feel confident to do this inner corner cat flick, then skip it. It's not the end of the world if you don't do it. Just practice. <laughs> And just above that, in that new tear duct that I created, I'm going to apply some white eyeshadow. For the brows, just fill in your brows as normal. You could go a little bit more bold and dramatic if you like. I'm not going to because I never, I don't feel like that sort of look looks good on me. Always set your brows with a brow gel, either a clear or a tinted one, whatever works for you. Just be sure to set them so that you know that they're going to stay all day. Now I'm going to go in with the rest of my face, bronzer slash contour, blush and highlight. So basically when you're applying contour slash bronzer for a competition day, you're going to want to go in quite heavy so that it actually stands out on the dance floor and it can be seen. So I'm just going to go in ham with the contour. I want to blend a lot of that contour up into my hairline as well. My nose would probably benefit from a bit of contour as well, I reckon. Now for some underbrow highlight, I'm going to go in again into the white eyeshadow. This is why I've hit pan majorly on this white eyeshadow because I use it for everything, man. So I'm just going to go in with some of that white eyeshadow and apply that under the brow for that signature ballroom eye underbrow look. Now before I go in with highlight, I'm going to go in with my makeup finishing spray. Now your setting spray is probably one of the most integral, important steps of your ballroom makeup routine. This stuff will help set your makeup, lock it in place for the rest of the day. I firmly believe that using a makeup finishing spray is one of the most important steps to helping your makeup last for the rest of the day, last through those intense bursts of energy on the dance floor when you come off panting and sweating and gross and you feel like I needed something to hold up for me and it was your makeup, honey. So <laughs> what I use is the Scandinavia Makeup Finishing Spray. This is the one that I always use for all my ballroom dancing competitions. It never does me dirty. And before that completely dries, I'm going to go in with my Maybelline Master Chrome Highlighter. As far as eyeliner goes, it's really up to you if you want to apply eyeliner because we do have such a dramatic winged out look. But I've always felt that my look is never complete without eyeliner. So I'm going to go in with my mascara, eyeliner, and eyelashes off camera and I will be right back and we will apply the lips. 
Okay, so I've just done my eyeliner and I just realized that um, probably the people who would be watching this video probably wanted to see the eyeliner part of this look but it was really nothing special I just went in with my felt tip eyeliner because this is what I find is the easiest way to apply eyeliner I really winged it out this way I have yet to sharpen up the tip here a little bit if you're not really confident with eyeliner but this is a look that you really want to do with eyeliner then I encourage you to practice and just take your time with it if you do want a thick eyeliner start thin and it will build up on its own. I think the key to this is finding an eyeliner that really works for you. I've found that a felt tip eyeliner, this sort of tip, really, really works for me. This, unfortunately, it has been discontinued. Maybelline has discontinued the Master Graphic Eyeliner, but there are a few eyeliners out on the market that you can find, and I will leave an Amazon listing for this eyeliner down below where you can still get this one on Amazon, but the shipping takes a little bit long, but I will leave that linked down below if you wanna go check it out. So that's basically the extent of the eyeliner that I did. I just want to sharpen it up a little bit and I'm just going to use a finer tipped pen to do that. Alright, mascara lashes off camera. I'll be right back. Okay, I am back with lashes on and this has taken me a million years. <laughs> Let's finish up this look with some lips, shall we? Now you can do any lip color that you like. Black, silver, white, red, blue, purple, any look that you like. I personally I'm gonna go with red because red is my freaking favorite. So basically I'm gonna go in with a red lip liner, slightly overdraw my lips, and then go over the top with a long lasting liquid lipstick. My favorite one is the Ofra Cosmetics one, and this one is in the shade Atlantic City. If you do want a long lasting liquid lipstick, definitely go check out the Ofra Cosmetics line. I will leave my video of all the lip swatches of all the lipsticks that I have in the description box down below. These lipsticks never do me dirty. I have worn these lipsticks for the whole day long. This is the one that I always used to wear to all my competitions and I probably really only had to reapply once throughout the day. more glitter under the eyes because why not <laughs> and if you want a bit of extra something something else apply that same glitter that you put on your eyelid on the center of your lips which is what I'm gonna do because I have a little bit of that glitter left here and I don't want to waste it <laughs> okay I think extra just took on a whole new meaning mm, love that <laughs> So that is it for this video, you guys. I know it was a bit of a long one, but if you're still here and if you're still watching, thank you so much for your time. I hope this video was helpful to you and I hope it was understandable. If you did find it helpful or if you did have any more questions on any of these steps or makeup tips and tricks, then please definitely leave those questions in the comments down below and I will answer your questions. I truly hope that this video was helpful to you. If you did, use this makeup tutorial for any of your ballroom competition looks this year or for the Australian Championships, then tag me in your social media. It is Life as Geek Eye on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Be sure to tag me. I would love to see the looks that you came up with. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe before you leave if you haven't already. I do put new videos out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of those future uploads, honey. So, thank you for watching, thanks for your time, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Hey guys, I just wanted to come on here and give you a quick little update. I have now had this makeup on for a total of about four hours. I know that that's not even remotely close to how long a competition day lasts, but I just wanted to give you guys an example of how well this makeup stays if you actually take the steps of going into all the preparation and steps of priming the skin and setting the face. So it's actually quite warm here today. I actually went out after filming that video and did a full hour of Latin dance fitness. So I did sweat. It was quite warm in the studio as well. I did work out in this makeup 
and it is still going strong. It has somewhat broken apart around my nose here, but makeup does that on me at the best of times anyway. The lipstick is still going strong as well. I haven't reapplied anything. I haven't touched up anything. I did say that there's no fallout on this glitter, but it turns out there is a few tiny little flecks of glitter on my face. I'm not mad at it. I kind of actually like the way it looks. This actually hasn't happened before with this Stila eyeshadow. I have a feeling that um, this Stila eyeshadow has somewhat dried out a little bit, <laughs> which is why it's giving me a little bit of glittery fallout on my cheeks. It doesn't normally do that, so just keep that in mind. But I have a feeling no matter what glitter you use anyway, even if you use a glitter glue, most glitter shadows will have a tiny bit of fallout. And it's really not that much on my cheeks anyway. I'm not actually mad at it. I kind of like having a little bit of glitter on my face. And yeah, the makeup's still going strong. It's still nice and smooth on my face. So it's definitely a testimony as to what priming your face can do and using a setting spray on your face as well. I've just found that the Scandinavia one works the best on me and so that's what I recommend for you to use if you want your makeup to last a very, very long time on your face. So while I do know that my makeup has really only been on my face for a few hours right now, I still did do a workout and it is going strong. I could see this makeup lasting for another several hours on my face, but for now, I've gotta go Take it off. Um, I hope you guys have had a lovely day and I will see you in my next video. This look that I have going on was ballroom dance competitioning. Competitioning, is that even a word? Competing. Going in with my Abilene, my Abilene, <laughs> Maybelline. There is a makeup, there is the normal makeup, fish can I speak? There is the makeup, go with, in with our foundation.